Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about density. So in your Edmodo, you are going to go to the post that says density. I was in the wrong subject. I was in earth science. Now I'm in chemistry. So here's the link for the reading. Um, the practice is going to be up pretty soon. I just have to scan it because it has some pictures that I can't copy and paste. And then here's my email you send your answers to. So, density. So a golf ball and a table tennis ball are about the same size, but a golf ball is going to be much heavier than the table tennis ball. If you had the same size ball and it was made out of lead, that would be very heavy. It would be heavier than the golf ball. So what we are comparing here is the density. So all the things are the same size, but they have different masses based. They have different masses. Um, so density is going to be the mass per unit volume of a substance. So the golf ball has a higher density than the table tennis ball. And the lead ball has a higher density than the golf ball. So density is going to be an intensive property. So it doesn't matter how much material you have in your sample. It is always going to have the same density. So water has a density of one gram per milliliter. So that doesn't depend on how much water you have. You could have a little water, you could have a lot of water. It's going to be the same density. So the SI units of density are kilograms per cubic meter. Now that's going to be too big for a lot of our samples that we're working with. So um, we can use grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. If it's something that isn't very dense, um, such as gas, you can use grams per liter. Now these are, here's a table of um, the density of some common items at 20 degrees Celsius. So you'll notice on the right, these are less dense things like hydrogen, helium, a lot of gases. So um, let's look at some density calculations. So an 18.2 gram sample of zinc metal has a volume of 2.55 cubic centimeters. Calculate the density of zinc. So we know that we have 18.2 grams in our sample. We know that the sample has a volume of 2.55 cubic centimeters. So what we want to know is the density of our sample. This one is actually very simple because density equals mass divided by volume. So we can just plug in our values that we have up here. So for mass, we plug in 18.2 grams. For volume, we plug in 2.55 cubic centimeters. If you calculate this, you get 7.14 grams per cubic centimeter. All right. So now we're going to try a different problem. We are going to use density to determine mass and volume. So what is the mass of 2.49 cubic centimeters of aluminum? What is the volume of 50 grams of aluminum? So we know the density of aluminum. That is in our table. It is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. So we know the density. We know our volume. 
we know our mass. OK. So. We don't know in the first one. We don't know the mass. For the second question, we don't know the volume. OK. So. The first one we do, we have 2.49 cubic centimeters of sample. We have a density of 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeters are on the top and the bottom, so we can cancel out cubic centimeters. We multiply 2.49 by 2.7, we get 6.2 grams. 6.72 grams, excuse me. For the second one, we know we have 50 grams. We multiply that, and this one we actually had to flip um, the density around because we need grams on top and we need grams on bottom so that grams cancels out. So we have 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter, but we flipped it around. So if we do 50 divided by 2.7, because we're doing 50 times 1, so 50 divided by 2.7, we get 18.5 cubic centimeters. OK. So finish your questions and make sure you turn them into me.